Hey guys, this episode we're gonna be talking about the brand new Prams Expect in Rails 8 that you may or may not have upgraded to yet. Um, you will see this in your scaffolds where you get Prams Expect ID, you also see Prams Expect um, your model name like post with title and body, and this addresses a couple of issues with the old way of doing things. So let's take a look at some of those problems. The old way that you might do this is you might say require post, permit, title, and body attributes, right? So if we were to go into our Rails application, here I've taken the new action and I'm just printing out the params. Uh, that are permitted through there. So right now we see params expect is raising an error saying there is no post. Now we are gonna use that params require. Um, and it will also say that the, this is invalid because there is no post in the param. So let's add post. And normally we do something like this where title, um, at the attribute is in square brackets next to post so it knows to put it inside of post and make that a hash. However, we have oftentimes malicious users or bots or whatever poking around, changing things up. And so if we say post equals hello, where it's a string instead of a hash, our params are going to blow up with this no method error rather than uh, actually sanitizing those params like it's supposed to. So this is a problem where we have params require post. This is going to give us, let's blow this up a little bit. This is gonna give us the string back of hello and then obviously permit is not a method on uh, that param or that string. It needs to be on a parameter object. So the way to fix this um, is actually to flip flop it. Um, so the way we can do that is we can say params permit post with title and body. And then we also tell it to do that require of post. So in order to, uh, try that out, we will see this require fails with the correct error message and the parameter missing error. And that is because when params permit uh, looks at this, it's going to then evaluate post and see that, oh, this needs to be a hash with title and body is optional inside of it. And uh, that is a string and not a hash. So we should um, not permit that parameter. So there we go. We get an empty um, item here, which then allows us to require post. But all of our scaffolds and controllers have done the opposite, um, where they've done the require first since strong, strong parameters came out. And this is one of the uh, issues that params expect handles for us. If we run this, uh, we will get that missing param method um, automatically, or missing param post with the parameter missing error, just like we see here uh, out of the box. But we don't have to like double specify this require. It is going to be just this portion of everything for us, which is great. So that um, simplifies this a little bit and makes this a little bit more secure so that people tampering with parameters uh, are going to get the correct errors back with these uh, being invalid requests. So that will sanitize things a little bit smoother, but what happens when we have something like, um, maybe we have a nested item like categories, and categories could have a name on them. So if we were to do this and we say post with, uh, let's do title and post categories is foo, um, this right here is going to then see that categories was not an, um, not a hash, it was just a string, so it is not permitted in this parameters. But if we were to say categories name, foo, this is going to set categories to that um, sub permitted parameters, but this is wrong because we want an array instead of a single item. And so our parameters are still something that can be messed with a little bit here because we need that empty um, square brackets inside to tell um, rack and action dispatch to make sure that this is parsed as a array instead of an object like a hash. So this is something that uh, is not really doable in params permit, uh, but we can do that in here. And the way we do it was we would say categories and we would do double square brackets so that the first square bracket says, hey, this is going to be an array and then the attributes that are permitted inside of that uh, array for each of the objects. So now, if we refresh this, 
we will get the correct thing where it is square brackets um, for the category. So we get an array. If we were trying to mess with this and assign categories to a hash instead, it is going to say that is not permitted and take care of that completely. And you'll see the old way of doing things. If we re-enable that, we'll still set categories, but it will set it to a single item instead of an array, which is not what we want. That is not properly uh, being trusted and sanitized here for us. So params expect is a great improvement just to make this more consistent and less tamperable. So we have to do it correctly in order to give us those types. It either needs to be a hash or an array or an individual value. Um, and we can tell it that and it will enforce it like it is supposed to. Now, one thing I want to point out before we go is that params expect is opt in your existing Rails application controllers do not have to use this. Permit and require are probably going to exist for a long time uh, because most all Rails applications use them currently. And it would be a very big change to require people to move to expect. Um, and while permit and require do continue to work, params expect is really the recommended way to do this just to keep things a little bit safer in your Rails apps. So if you can upgrade to Rails 8, definitely upgrade your controllers to the new syntax. And if you can't upgrade to Rails 8 quite yet, use the permit and then the require in that order so that uh, you will get a little bit more of that benefit of order of operations for permitting those parameters. So when people are doing those malicious post equals name or foo or whatever, and submitting a string instead of a hash or an array, you will be protected by those. And you'll have less errors in your error monitoring like Honey Badger, and this will be taken care of automatically um, for those situations, which is great. So I highly recommend doing at least this, but if you can get up to Rails 8, then take care um, and take care of all of those params methods and make sure that you use params expect everywhere you can. If you want to see some of the internals of this, uh, Martin M. Day works on Ruby Gems and Bundler and made this PR to Rails back in like April. Finally got merged in September. And there's a lot of uh, great discussion talking about how it should work and the back and forth on those various um things because this is quite a core feature of rails at this point to be changing so it's a pretty big um big pr here and it goes and updates all of the action mailbox and other internal controllers inside of rails to use params expect as well and all of these are really pretty simple it's pretty much adding expect removing a require and permit and then wrapping any of those arrays with and extra square brackets to handle that. Um, but take a look at this PR, it's really great, great uh, discussion and stuff if you wanna see you know, what goes on on a core feature like this uh, by the Rails core team and stuff. So that is it, params expect I think is gonna be a great improvement, just protecting our code just a little bit more um, and we will benefit from that with less of those undefined method permit um, issues whenever somebody is poking around where they shouldn't be. So that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you in the next one. Peace.